the Curate Kids Leaders. Welcome to Curate Online. Welcome to Curate Online. Welcome to Curate Online. And welcome to Curate Online. Welcome to Curate Online. You're with the right Reverend Reed and Pastor Steve Frisch. Steve-o, great to have you with us. And we have got an amazing gathering lined up for everyone who's watching. We sure do. We've got Renee Hanna, amazing pastor here at Curate, who is going to be preaching and possibly something to do with that. I don't know. <laughs> A little bit there? of temptation she's going to be talking about. And yep. I've been tempted because there's been donuts on the set for the last a uh, couple of weeks, and so here I am making the most of it, getting into the stale donut. Making <laughs> the most of it, two week old donut. Hey, yeah. and uh, Steve, there's been heaps of amazing things happening in Curate, and one of those is the vision offering. Yeah, it's been amazing um, seeing the generosity of our church family, and thank you so much to everybody who's been a part of that and given. Like, none of what we do is possible without you, and we're just excited to see the, the vision that's going to be released and what God is going to do through, um, yeah, through the generosity of many. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, and if you want to give your best guess as to the figure, we will send a donut to you <laughs> for the closest guess to the person who gets the closest. Possibly even this donut. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not this one, yeah. a fresh donut. Yeah. Hey, and Steve, we just want to uh, say to all of you watching online, we pray that today would be a really, really special day for you, that you would be impacted wherever you're watching from. And so, Steve, it would be great for you to pray, and then we're going to go into some, a time of worship. Uh, with the song Fortress. So why don't you pray for us and then we'll get into it. Awesome, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we can gather together like this wherever we are in our homes, whether it's with others, by ourselves, Lord. Um, we thank you that you say in your word, where two or three are gathered, there you are in, in our midst. And so, Father, we just we invite you into this time. Lord, we open up our hearts to you and we, uh, we ask that you would be blessed by our worship, Lord, we, we do this all for you and we choose in this time to fix our attention, to focus on you and ask that you come and have your way in this gathering today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
with you today. I'm going to be sharing a message from our Buffet series, which is all about making good choices um, when there's so many things on, on offer today. Um, but before I get started, I just want to pray. 
God, I thank you so much um, that this is your message, Lord, that these are your words that are coming to impact your people, God. And Father, I pray right now that, Lord, you would have your way and that this would be your words, not mine, that would come through, Lord God. I thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, when I was thinking about this series, I was thinking about all those little choices that we make from day to day. Um, I know for me, like something that I'm often having to um, make the right choices by are real simple things. Like for example, when I go to the supermarket, I am always so tempted to leave my trolley beside my car and not walk it all the way back to that trolley station which always feels like you just don't have time to do. And then something inside of you just goes, oh, come on, you've got it. You just do the right thing. Go and take that trolley back. Or like when you, you're going supermarket shopping and you've, you've got that item and then you realized you got the wrong thing and, and you'd have to go right back to the other side of the supermarket to put it back. And man, don't you feel tempted just to pop it on the shelf right beside you and not go back? But then something inside of you is like, come on, Renee, just do the right things. Um, my son ended up being a shelf stocker and I tell you what, that helped me because I started to realize, oh, okay, so now I know the person that stocks these shelves, I'm gonna be good to my son. But we come against these kinds of choices, little choices or big choices all the time. And sometimes it's actually really hard to make the choices um, in order to live well, to live with integrity and to especially overcome temptations that can come over our life. Sometimes the temptations can be so overwhelming. And so how do we make choices when we are overwhelmed by this kind of temptation? I want to read um, a scripture to you from Matthew 7 and verse 13. And Matthew puts it like this. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. You see, in a buffet, there can be so many things on the table. You've got donuts, you've got cakes, you've got chocolates, and trust me, I am such a sweet tooth. Every time I walk up to a buffet table, I am drawn in by the donuts and the cakes and the chocolate. And then there's always those pesty little bowls of carrot sticks sitting amongst all this beauty of sugar. And how do we choose these carrot sticks? Or we could call it the narrow gate on the buffet table. When everything else looks so good and you're so tempted by those donuts. James 1 verse 12 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. You know, it's not just about, well, it's not as simple, unfortunately, as uh, just a buffet table. Sometimes the kind of temptation that comes our way and the options and the choices that we have access to are things that will lead to destruction. Things like when you walk through that wide gate that, that ultimately ends, as the Bible puts, in death. Not necessarily death, physiologically, but death by the spirit or death in, in terms of destruction in your life and consequences that will come in and steal your future. But we can find that narrow gate today. And I believe that I'm here to talk to you about how we can enter through that narrow gate and overcome temptation that may come our way. Joel 3 verse 10 says, Say to the nations far and wide, get ready for war. And sometimes we need to understand the environment that we are in. That this environment is just not about just us and, and we've got our future and we've got our life all to ourselves. But to understand that there is an enemy out there, that he does not want good for your life, that he wants to mess with your life. And this is what Joel keeps going on and saying, get ready for war, call out your best warriors, let all your fighting men advance for the attack, hammer your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, train even your weaklings to be the warriors, come quickly all you nations everywhere, gather together in the valley. 
And you know, in this season, I believe that we need to wake up and we need to be aware of the environment that we're in, of the war, of the battle that is for our lives. You see, anything that is marked by the name of Jesus, the enemy hates. And so that is you and I. And we walk around with a target on our back. Because you see, the enemy wants to put thoughts into your mind that are contrary to God's best for your life. He doesn't want that future that God has for you. He doesn't want your marriage to succeed. He doesn't want your family to be unified. He doesn't want that relationship to be, dis- to be restored. The enemy does not want the best for you. But I also want to tell you right from the outset that there is some really good news here. And that is that the power of God, the power of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit can overcome all of what the enemy will do. That you get to win every time. You have the power of God on your side and the enemy cannot stand a chance when you understand this. And this is what it's called when you walk through the narrow gate. It's standing firm in the truth of God on your life and looking at all times to God, knowing that if you can walk in His strength, you will make it through that narrow gate and into the life that God has for you. But I wanted to to put out a disclaimer. You know, there's sometimes people can go away from these kinds of messages and just think like the enemy's everywhere. Like the enemy's in, in our car that just broken down or the enemy is in our plumbing pipe that just burst. But you know what? It's not the enemy. It was that blimmin' banana skin that was in that plumbing pipe. You know, we don't want to give the enemy too much glory here. But I do want today to raise our awareness and expose the way the enemy works so that we will become aware so that we can overcome temptation and we can live the kind of life that God has for us. I love in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 where it says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. They have divine power to take down strongholds. You see, you and I have been given the right weapons to come out on top every single time. You know, there's a really great book in the Bible called Genesis, and there's a familiar story that many of us know, whether we've been brought up in church or not, and it's about Adam and Eve and this garden of Eden, which it talks about in the Bible as complete paradise. This garden where um, there's a moment where um, Eve is tempted by um, a serpent, it says. And we look at this, this, um, this chapter here in the Bible in Genesis chapter three, and I just want to read it with you today because I really believe there's some incredible truths in here that we can learn about to understand how we can overcome temptation, that we can learn from Eve and what she was unable to see in that moment. So why don't we go to Genesis chapter three, if you've got your Bibles, why don't you turn there right now and read along with me? It'll also be up on the screens for you. But chapter three, the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? That sounds like a narrow gate kind of request. Of course, we may eat from the trees in the garden. The woman replied, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. Got a buffet table of all these fruit trees. You can have anything you like, but don't touch that one. In verse four, it says, you won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it. You'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her so she took some of the fruit and ate it and then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too verse 7 at that moment their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness 
So they sewed le fig leaves together to cover themselves. And so how do we navigate those moments when everything inside of us is just saying, just saying, eat that fruit. Like it's fine. It's not going to be as bad as, as what it seems. Like what could go wrong? It's just a, a, a piece of fruit. And it's gonna be so good. And don't you know that fruit's actually really good for you? So there can't be a whole lot that will go wrong. So how do we navigate these kinds of situations where it just seems okay to do it? And it's hard to see on the other side of that decision. You know, um, the first thing that when I read this that stands out to me is that we can navigate these choices by knowing the enemy. And that's the first point today. You know, I've got these hooks sitting on my table. And that's because, um, well, actually, I, I've learned to like fishing because my husband loves fishing. So I've learned to like fishing. I'm, I'm yet to do the whole bait the hook thing. But I tell you what, I'm getting close. Um, but I went out fishing um, not so long ago um, with this incredible guy called Nev Crawford, who watches online, so shout out to Nev, who lives in the Coromandel, and he took um, my husband Steve and I out fishing, and you know what? It was quite an experience. He's got this massive boat, and um, we started out, first of all, by going to this little spot to collect these little fish, um, which they use, they call liveies. I don't know if that's a shortened word, I don't know, fishing term, but the idea is that it's these little fish that you can put on your hook, um, a live fish, to lure in the big kingfish. And so out we go and we go and catch all these liveys using little hooks, something like this, um, that the team told me don't take out that of the bag because you're likely to get it hooked in your skin or something because that little teeny one, so they're in here for safety. But these these little hooks in here, and that's what we would use to catch these liveys. And then we would go out to the special spot where the kingfisher liked to be. And this spot was researched, like Nev knew where to go to get the kingfish. He had like this fish finder, so we could see what we are looking for. Like he was set up, we were good to go. We had the right hooks that looked something like this guy. I mean, this guy looks savage. He is ready to catch a kingfish. We had these like things that we were strapped on with so we could carry the weight of the kingfish. We had the, even the, the actual nylon was the right weight for a kingfish. The, the rod was a special rod that was good for catching kingfish. Excuse my ignorance. And so we were, we were out there ready to catch this kingfish. And then we decided to move to a snapper hole. And so the kingfish rods go away and out comes the snapper rods. And now we've got these things with like pretty little pink stuff on it because apparently the snappers like this pretty little pink stuff. And when it floats in the water, I don't know, maybe it, it looks a little bit like a fish and the snapper seems to like it. We changed the bait. We're no longer using liveys, but we're using these big chunks of bait because we want to catch a big snapper. And we're going to the snapper hole. We're going to the place that the snapper like to, to hang out. And we're using the right rods and we've got everything in place to catch these snappers. And I was just sitting there in the boat and I was thinking about this different strategies for the kingfish and the snapper. And I thought, man, that's the way the enemy works. He knows us really well. He knows exactly where we are going to trip up. He knows exactly the kind of hooks to use to lure us in. He knows if we like the pretty pink stuff to bring us in. He knows if we need the little things, if we've got little mouths. He knows us. He knows us. And as I was sitting there, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, the, the enemy is that crafty. Like he doesn't, he doesn't come up and go, hey, hey, just wanting to let you know I'm actually, I'm coming for you. So, so like, this is the way I'm going to target you. I'm going to, I'm going to come in and you know how like you really struggle with anger. I am going to throw things at you that is just going to trigger that. And I'm just going to bring out the worst in you. And then that's going to cause disruption in your marriage and in your family. And he doesn't, he doesn't give us warning. You know, we don't go fishing and say to the snapper, hey, just letting you know, we're going to drop down this hook. And what we're going to do then is, is we're going to put a, a big bit of bait on it and you're going to eat this. 
and then your mouth is gonna get caught on this hook. Then we're gonna reel you up. And then you know what? We're gonna knock you out. And then we're gonna skin you, we're gonna fillet you, we're gonna fry you, and we're gonna eat you. You know, the enemy does not give us the heads up. And so we need to understand the way he works. And we need to be aware of him. And we need to expose him today so that we are not caught unaware. It says in 1 Peter 5 that he knows us, he studies us. It says he prowls around like a roaring lion, ready to devour us. And that's what he does. He appeals to us. You know, um, when you read back in chapter 3, it says that Eve looked, looked at the fruit and she saw that it looked delicious. See, the enemy was appealing to her craving for this delicious fruit. And then she said that she wanted the wisdom it would give her. You see, the enemy appealed to that. The enemy said, hey, you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. And he knew that that was a stronghold for Eve, that she wanted that kind of wisdom. He knew exactly what to do to lure Eve in to his trap. It said that in verse 7, no, sorry, in verse um, 4, it says, God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. See, the enemy was even making promises to Eve. He was making promises. But the thing we need to understand is that the enemy does make promises, but they're the promises that he has no power, no power at all to keep. And we see that because when it goes on, what the enemy promised Eve did not come to pass. The complete opposite happened. He makes promises he, he can't fulfill. In verse 7, at that moment, their eyes were opened. This is instead of fulfilling the promise. And they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. They felt shame. You see, what happens is there's these momentary times of like delight or like that fruit. My gosh, it was so good. Like this momentary piece of joy or just this great experience. And it's just a momentary pleasure. And that's, that's what the enemy will try and persuade us with, just a momentary pleasure. You know, it all seems good in the moment, but then the next day, you've got a hangover. Like, come on, there's, everybody knows what I'm talking about. This sounds a whole lot like a Friday night, you know, going out, going out to a party or something and just having one too many and then the next day having that hangover. You know, that choice in the moment seemed like a good idea, but the next day you're paying the price. It's a moment. You know, in Proverbs 14 verse 12, it says that there is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. It seems okay at the time, but it doesn't feel okay the next day. It actually goes on and says in verse 13 that, that, that the laughter that we have will run out. It, it's funny in the moment, but the next day we're in grief. That's what it says in Proverbs. And you know, in verse seven, it's, it says that they ended up in shame the next day. They were in shame the next day. And so here's the enemy that he's luring them in. He's luring them in. He's enticing them. He's making promises. He's making it out as if it's gonna be such a good thing. And then the next day they end up in shame. And what does the enemy do? He rubs that shame. He rubs that shame in their face. And that's what he does. He now crushes you with the outcome of that choice. Because as the scripture in Peter just, helped, just told us, he, he prowls around ready to devour us, to take us out. But you know what? This is not all about the enemy here. We have to take responsibility. We have to take responsibility for our adjustments that we need to make in our lives. You see, it says here that Eve lured Adam. It says that then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. You know, sometimes we've got to look at the people that we're hanging out with 
We've got to look at the environment that we are in. Some of us, the, the circles that we are hanging out with, the environment that we put ourselves in is like a red carpet rolling out for us that we would walk down as we are lured in and as we are um, pressured in to making choices that is not God's best for our life, that is not reflective of what it looks like to live out of the grace of God on our lives. And we need to understand how important it is that we make sure we are in the right circle of friends, to make sure that we are in the right environment. You know, I want to encourage you right now to be found in church community, to be found in church every Sunday. You've got to understand that there's so many things I could, I could share with you right now about the adjustments that you could make in your life um, that would help you to overcome temptation and to make the right choices to live well. But the reality is, I could never say it in these short minutes, but if you found yourself in church every Sunday, you will be continually receiving messages of life, messages that will help you to decipher, to navigate the world that we live in, to help you make the best choices for your life. And so being found in church every Sunday, online, maybe to gather people with you in your home to watch it online is so important. And I wanna encourage you with that. You know, I just think about um, what I share with my teenagers often about Christian relationships and, and how we're gonna save ourselves for marriage and not sleep around before we get married, but we're gonna save ourselves for marriage. You know, there's things that we've gotta put in, put in place in our lives to be able to do and be able to walk that kind of thing out, to be able to live well. You know, for example, don't find yourself alone with your boyfriend or girlfriend, like stay in a public place, stay amongst people, because it's much harder to get intimate in front of people. Um, and so there's boundaries we can put in our lives. What about um, if you do find yourself alone, flooding the, the room with worship music and making sure that you're not trying to do it alone, that you're doing it by the power of God. Because the enemy, he will use our desires. He will use our desires and he will lure us into making those choices that are not according to what God says. And you know, you can't always change the environment that you're in. We can do a lot about changing the people we hang out with and making sure the people we hang out with are going to encourage us to do the right things. But sometimes we find ourselves in environments, maybe it's at school, maybe it's at your workplace, that the environment itself is just, it's difficult. You're bombarded all the time with just toxic thoughts. And so we're gonna to need to know something more than just our own boundaries and our own decisions to be able to overcome that. And that brings me to my third point, that we can navigate the temptations by knowing Him, by knowing Jesus. It says in Proverbs 9 verse 10, fear of the Lord. And fear here is not about being scared, um, but it's like a holy respect and reverence for God. So fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. You see, Eve didn't know Jesus as her Lord and Savior. It says in Genesis 3 verse 4 that the enemy says, you won't die. The serpent replied to the woman, God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it. And you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. See, the enemy challenges God's truth. But when you know him, you will be able to stand up against that and say, that does not sound like the God I know. When you understand that Jesus went to the cross and faced the most horrific torture, the most cruel kind of death, he was nailed at the cross and left to die. And he did that for you and for I. He did that so that our wrong choices, the sin in our lives would not come between us and God. And so the Jesus who did that for us, 
would not sound like what the enemy is saying here in verse four. Because when you know the sound of Jesus, when you know his truth, you will become more aware of the enemy's lies. And so we've got to know God's truth over not just the enemy, but also our own toxic thinking. You know, just the whole one more, it won't hurt, or hey, we're just in love and surely God wouldn't want to withhold something so wonderful from us. Surely God would be okay with that. God's a God of love, right? You see, when we understand the truth of God, we can understand and know the voice of the enemy. But you see, Eve didn't know what we knew. We look at it and we think, oh my goodness, they had, they had everything. They had, it was paradise. It was a, the garden of, of paradise and they lived with just no cares in the world. But they didn't have what we have today. You see, we know what Jesus did on the cross for us. And the truth of that and the reality of that is enough for us to take hold of and to understand the power of God on our lives. You see, we get to know the enemy sold the lie that, hey, you know, you'll just have to live with the defeat. Maybe you're here and you're saying to me, Renee, like, you don't understand. I've been born into a family where anger or abuse or, or drinking too much or, or whatever is just, is just part of, of, of our family genetics. Like it's just, it's just what I've grown up with. And so we're gonna need more than just our strength and, and just awareness of the enemy's tactics and just adjustments of our life to overcome that. And that's the last point I wanted to bring today is that we can overcome it by His Spirit. And if you go to Romans 6, it's, it talks about how the same Spirit that God gave Jesus to raise Him from the dead is the very Spirit that He gives you and I when we make a decision to become a follower of Jesus. And so if that same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in us, then I'm here to tell you that by His Spirit, you too can be free from those strongholds on your life. You do not have to be under them anymore. It says in verse 4 in Romans 6, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of God, now we also may live new lives you get the opportunity today to make a new story for your life and to transform your life, to change the tra trajectory of your future. Verse 12 to 14, it says, Do not let sin control the way you live and do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have a new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Does that mean that we can just go and do what we like because we have the freedom of God's grace? Absolutely not. The freedom of God's grace actually is what gives us the power to choose to do what is right. The power to walk through that narrow gate and into the life that He promises us. In verse 16, it says that you can become a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. And so maybe you're here and you're like, you know what, Renee, it's too hard. Like the, the struggle that I have, I've been trying to overcome it for so long. It's something I was born into. It's the genetics of my family. It's because of an experience that I've had. 
And now I'm just, I'm overcome with a struggle and I can't seem to get out of it. Maybe I've given my life to Jesus like years ago, but I'm still struggling with this, this anger or this lust or this unforgiveness or this bitterness or this jealousy or whatever it is, this drinking problem, porn, whatever it is. It's too hard. It feels too hard. But Jesus didn't die on the cross. He wasn't tortured on the cross so that we can live defeated lives or defeated in that area. He went to the cross and he paid that price so that you and I could be free to live the best life, our best life. And so the same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave is on you right now. If you would humble yourself to receive from the Holy Spirit, all that He has for you. If you were to wake up every day and say that I'm not gonna do this by my strength or by my own might, but by the power of the Spirit of God. If you commit every day to, to Him, if you find yourself in the right circle of friends, in the community of, of believers, in church, listening to great messages through Curate Online, if you find yourself there by the power of the Spirit, I know that you can overcome all things. Some of us might need to get a bit of extra help. Some of us might need to go to counseling, but I'm telling you, it is worth every bit of fight because God has an incredible purpose and plan for you. And it is to live free, not defeated. And so it's time to take back your thoughts. It's time to take back your future. It's time to say enough's enough. The enemy is not having a go anymore. God has a future for me and I want to step into that. It is time today to say to that stronghold, no more will you have a hold over my life. I will be free from it. I will see this marriage restored. I will see this family unified. I will overcome that drinking problem because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so perhaps you're here today and you're like, I, I haven't actually yet made the decision to become a follower of Jesus. So what does it look like for me? You know, if that's you, it's, I just want to say it's actually really simple. It's just receiving the gift of grace that God has given you. It's knowing that you didn't have to do anything to deserve it, that you can come as, you're, as you are. God's grace is enough for you. And so today, all you have to do is say, yep, I'm going to choose to believe. I don't have it all together. I don't even really understand what this is all about, but I am going to choose you today. And so if that's you and you want to make that decision, then I'm going to say a prayer. And why don't you repeat after me? Dear God, I thank you so much that you died on the cross for me. I thank you, Lord, that you have forgiven me. And today I choose you. I choose to leave my old ways behind and to go on a journey of discovering more about you and the right way of living. In Jesus' name, amen. Amazing. If you just made that decision to follow Jesus, congratulations. That is the best decision that you'll ever make. And it's one that you, this is a journey that you don't want to do alone. And so we would love to know, like raise a virtual hand. Um, you can reach out to us in the chat. There's a team of people waiting to, to connect with you or go to curatechurch.com slash connect. Let us know that way. But please, it would be just our honor to be able to walk this out with you and help you take the next step. And so let us know. That's right. Don't do the walk alone. And we would also love to encourage you, we are now receiving registrations for Curate College for 2021. It's for all of our future leaders and pastors, an opportunity to be trained and equipped to make a difference for Jesus. And so if you've got an inkling or perhaps that could be something for you, please follow the link below and uh, register now for College 2021. Absolutely. And Steve, I, I, think it's, it? I think I need to finish this with a... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Have an amazing week. Be blessed. Thanks for tuning in. See you later.